Let me get my chronometer here. Okay, so 15 minutes, uh, I'll try to give you uh, like a landscape of, of what's happening uh, in Chile uh, related to K-12 education. I'm gonna center my, my presentation here. So first of all, thank you so much for this invitation. Uh, I think uh, EduCamp is one of the truly grassroots uh, uh, meetings uh, that has stand in time. So uh, I wish, I, I bet you have had a, a great time in, in these days and so very happy to contribute. I'm also happy to be along with Christer in his tremendous uh, global uh, digital library project uh, is spreading around the world where it's needed most. And also very happy to be with Javier Atena. Uh, Atena, she, uh, she won't say it, but uh, besides being a global citizen, she's also Chilean. So I'm just very happy to be with her uh, and, and, and share this. Uh. So um, we're gonna talk about OER in, in, in these times of pandemia where, where of course uh, many challenges arises, but in every challenge, we also can have opportunities, uh, especially in the K-12 sphere where I think openness and OER has been lagging behind. So we need to catch up in, in the K-12 sphere so we can harness the opportunities of OER and openness in education. Um, well, I, I don't think the Chilean case is very much different, different from around the world. Uh, we've had to have this, this forced transition from a you know, face-to-face -face, um, education in K-12 to an online uh, education as an alternative modality so we could you know keep the the, the learning process on board and I, I wouldn't say this what we'd have is is a truly online education we're we're still in an emergency kind of you know distance education where we're trying to do our our, our best and I think who, who examples it most is with, uh, with K-12 teachers, and we have seen it all. We've seen, you know, the frustration for, for failing uh, and getting very stressed in this transition to online education. But we have also seen adaptability, especially with teachers that in one moment they said, no, no, I'm not, I wasn't trained for this, I can't do this. Uh, and then they, they just had to settle down and, and, and start to to adapt uh, their work. And we have seen also very innovational uh, practices going on. So I uh, see we've seen it all and, and, and now I think we, we need to build on top of that. Um, in this transition to, uh, to digital education or online connected education in K-12, we've also seen a very renovated interest in resources. And, and of course, you know, we people that harness the OER as a, as, as a paradigm, um, I, I think we need to really get into this discussion. And, and what has happened in my country is that uh, the ministry, uh, you know, built up a, a, a repository of digital educational resources. At this moment, we said, as we transition to digital, we need digital resources and, and we, do not have a critical mass of digital resources to work on. So I think there's a, there's a spot of opportunity there. Also digital libraries, Krista, Krista will, will surely deepen on that uh, later, uh, but also our, our ministry you know, um, cleared up uh, and, and, and made accessible uh, digital libraries as a way to promote reading in, in, in the kids uh, in these times of pandemia. So, but also uh, our, our officials have, um, have tried to bring some type of solution of, 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 of uh, different digital services. And basically what they have done is build some type of partnership with corporations like Google and Microsoft uh, specifically. That's, that's the agreements that uh, we know here in, 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 in Chile. So, and they give some type of integral um, digital services. Uh, 
Google with their with their G Suite uh, suit um, provides video conference through Meet. You know the drive to manage documents and and a whole lot of uh, services. So I, I think this is very key because K twelve education needs integral solutions for for their problems. And I think OER needs to have that that uh, that framework uh, uh, to work on. So as we transition to from a face-to-face -face, uh, education uh, format to a, a, an online uh, connected education, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is how is Chile prepared for, our, for online education? And, and with these, uh, you, you would say, hey, in Chile, we're not doing bad at all. We have a, a, a a big penetration of, uh, of mobile uh, telephony, uh, a penetration which is similar to Singapore. And we have a lot more mobile devices than we have Chileans. Um, we have, uh, so although there's a lot of mobile devices, not all of them have internet access, which is, uh, which is also one thing that we need to consider. But in, 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 in in, in, in the whole picture, we're not doing bad at all. We have, it, if we look at the global connectivity index we're in, uh, we're ranked 33 in, in, in the world. But what happens if we take a, a closer look? We can find that, um, that uh, uh, we have like a small 8%, which is in blue, uh, where connectivity is something, full connectivity is something natural. Uh, we, we have unlimited uh, mobile and, we, and the houses have access to internet through optic fiber and cable, any broadband solution. But that's only the 8% because if we look at C2 and C3, uh, the connectivity is relevant, but it's very more, it's much more limited because you have limited plans on mobile phones and prepaid. Prepaid is when you just put like a dime on, on your mobile so you can. Um, so, so uh, of course you have to, when you have those limited plans, you really need, you just can't be connected online as, 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 as you would wish. Uh, you need to be very, it has restrictions to, to the use, especially if you're looking for uh, educational uses like you know video conference, and and in yellow we have the lower class uh, segments of, of our society where the connectivity is restrictive. You have more than seventy percent of those of those two segments with prepaid mobile, and and forty percent uh, 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 do not have access at home. So although we're very, we're okay ranked in, 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 in connectivity. We have a lot of uh, issues here um, where in the 90% of all of our population in segments C2, C3, D and E, we have more than 5 million people with that internet access of, at home. And I think that speaks that, that, that uh, connectivity for educational uses is very limited and restricted. What to say about the, the, the lower class segments where if you take 20% of D and most of segment E, you have like three and a half million people completely unconnected. So we need to ask ourselves, what can we do uh, to have an equitable uh, ways for, so we can deliver the, this new, uh, uh, way of education for K-12. And if we look in the, in, in the region, things get a lot, a lot uh, harder. Um, this is, this is our, our, our numbers from, from, a, from a UN ECLAC uh, study just recently, where it states that 32 million children in Latin America do not have access and, and, and about 40 million uh, homes do not have any type of uh, connection to internet. So, and if we look countries like India, 
you know, things just really get out of hand um, where two thirds of, of the whole population in India, which is around 860 million, live in rural, rural areas. Most of them are, do not have internet access. So, so you no know, connectivity is, is like a baseline that we need for uh, this transition from face-to-face -to, -face to, to digital connected learning. So if we, if, but what happens in, in this picture where, where we do not have an equitable access to internet, we need alternative means of delivery. And, and here, I think a big opportunity for OER is around offline resources. This mainly because op open resources have a lot of flexibility and you can, uh, this flexibility, you, you can create solutions for offline resources. This is, I think, a, a very key issue because not only we need to have the homes connected to the internet, we also need to have uh, uh, devices disposable for our kids so they can work on. Um, and, and I would like to really encourage you to look at Colib Colibri. Colibri is an off OER off offline resource solution with where it creates learning content channels where you have very rich interactive content uh, with video lessons, exercises, and any in other type of uh, interactive objects like you know simulations from Fed, um, the Fed project from the University of Colorado. Surely you have heard about it. They have very good content. So. Um, We've been engaged with, uh, with, with Calibri um, on our side here, and uh, we received a small uh, grant from, from Creative Commons. Here's a, so that's a, and we're, we received a small grant, so we're, uh, um, we're developing um, a, 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 count, a content channel for math in, from fifth to 10th grade level. So, I really encourage you to, to look at Colibri and uh, we should be, uh, our channel will be distributed by the ministry in, in to rural schools where they're gonna have the Colibri pre-installed. So we say, hey, we got a channel that's uh, curricularly aligned. So it will be uh, distributed there. So, um, but I think we, we have another big challenge uh, uh, besides the uh, curriculum. But I'm sorry, besides connectivity. And I think it's around curriculum. You know, cu uh, curriculum for K-12 is like the framework where, where everybody looks up and, and, and shapes their educational experience. But today we really need to think what sh should our learners be uh, learning about, especially in, in, in our curriculum, which is a very saturated, big, heavily content-driven curriculum. And I think that needs to change uh, because we don't have the same disposal of time uh, of work uh, with our kids. So we, we really need to reprioritize the curriculum goals. And, and this concept to nuclearize the curriculum, it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge challenge because we, we, we need to change our content-driven curriculum to you know, select core areas of learning that we can have a multidisciplinary approach. So as we learn one thing, we can, uh, we, we can work with different subjects uh, around that. And, um, and this is a very changing uh, mindset that we need to do because we need to leave content aside and we need to focus on skills especially skills for problem solving and project-based learning, which are also innovative ways of... Uh, of um... And I think that we have a, a good opportunity here because um, as we rethink curriculum, we need to also rethink about curriculum materials. Especially we have seen that printed textbooks have been very subutilized at home. We kind of forgot about printed textbooks. Uh, and, and, and I think that was a very wrong approach because kids do have printed textbooks at their homes and they, they don't need connectivity for it as well. But also we need to rethink how printed materials can merge to this uh, uh, 
digitalized or online education. So, and what has been happening, as le at least what we have seen uh, from the publishing industry, ob obviously a proprietary, uh, very copyright driven uh, publishing industry, is that uh, they're, they're putting all their stocks on, on digital interactive textbooks. In our ministries is in, in effect doing that. It's scaling uh, a textbook solution from Discovery ed Education, this you know English uh, multinational. So uh, just a, a close up here. I think, uh, and I wanted to tell you about. Uh, in, in we're working on an open interactive textbook for eleventh grade uh, civic education. We're working uh, with press books. Uh, uh, our bet is, is it's, it's a mix between using press books and H5P. Um, press books because it, it's like a platform for, for books, it's very elegant, it, it, it brings out the multi format outputs. And, um, and H5P just develops wonderful interactive content. So as we merge both, I think we're going to have a very good uh, project. And this is uh, being supported by the Rebus community, which is like the foundation for press books and uh, where they have this very community driven approach. So that is our bet for online resources as well, Calibri for uh, offline resources. So that's uh, our take here in Chile uh, to bring OER into K-12 uh, education. Thank you for your attention.